So, well, thank you for having us here. It's always great to be back in Naxos, particularly because the weather is beautiful here now and it's still snowing in Canada. What we have here is an exhibition uh, that we've put together for the people of Naxos and this is very much written for the public, the general public. Have, have you exhibited something similar anywhere else in, no. in the world? No, this, this is our first uh, exhibition. The, the mayor of Naxos, three years ago when we began the excavation, he, he said at some time you must do an exhibition for us. I was very happy to have that invitation, but we said we should wait three years to do it professionally and when we have something to say. So it, it's very important for us to do this exhibition because um, the people of Naxos uh, have been very generous to us, they've been very supportive. Also this is the heritage of Naxos and uh, a lot of our work is very academic and difficult to access mm -hmm. so we wanted to make something much more public interest. Obviously the, the exhibition is written mainly in Greek but also in English because we are hoping that the tourists who also come to Naxos will also be interested uh, in the earliest history of the island. The exhibition very simply uh, introduces everybody to the site, where it is, and uh, about when it was first discovered in 1981. We also explain um, why the, the, uh, the site is important, because the Hill of Stelida uh, is a, a geological rarity in this area, because it's made of this very um, hard but sharp cutting stone called chert. So how did this all begin with Naxos and Stelida? Uh -huh. So the, the site was first found in 1981 by some French archaeologists. Um, they didn't say much about the site, it was very confusing for them. So nothing really happened uh, again until uh, the Greek Ministry of Culture archaeologists started working there uh, around 2000 when people started building homes and, and the site needed investigating. When you come? So, I've been working on Naxos since 1994. Mm -hmm. I, I did my, yes. my PhD in the museum, mm -hmm. and when I was here in 2000, uh, the head of the museum, Olga Felaniotu, took me to the site, mm -hmm. um, and she suggested that one day I should do something here. So, what is found here changes the whole picture for what we know about prehistoric habitation in the Cycladins. Right? Absolutely. So the site, the importance of the site is that um, this relates to the period before the making of tools of metal. This is early prehistoric periods when people were making all of their tools and weapons out of stone. But good quality stone is very rare and so this makes this site very important. So, so you're talking uh, we're, we're talking, so, okay, so when, if you read the, uh, the textbooks today about Naxos, it probably says that the first people of Naxos were at Grota mm -hmm. and the Zas Cave yes. 7,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. This site goes back to at least 250,000 years old. So, it's the oldest site in the Cyclades. Um, it's completely changed our understanding of the early human history of the islands and some of our discoveries might also help change uh, our understanding of early humans in general, questions of global importance. So the site, one of the other important things about the site is how the, many, the, the great depth of time that it was used, but also we have evidence that early versions of us, Homo sapiens, were there, also Neanderthals, and then pre-Neanderthal populations. So it's a very rare place where we can study the behavior and the activities of different kinds of human in one place. Stelida is the, the first Paleolithic site we have found in the Cyclades. It's the oldest site in the Cyclades, but it's also a very rare kind of early prehistoric site. So Stelida is a place where you find um, three different kinds of humans uh, visiting and working the site uh, over a very long time. Sites like that are very rare and so we have here a map of um, other prehistoric quarries and really there's one other example in Greece but then we have to go to Turkey or Israel, Egypt, 
Arabia or India. They, they have very, very few of these sites are known. So in Greece, we know of other sites, not in the Cyclades, where there are Neanderthals. We have other Paleolithic sites in Greece, but there's nothing like Stelida. So the archaeology of Stelida, we are hoping, will make a contribution to a much bigger question about uh, the timing and the roots of early human migration. So this is very important because yeah. of Naxos being an island, which means that they would have to navigate. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, that depends. Okay, so until recently, um, the archaeology of Greece wasn't seen as very important for very early human prehistory. Now, the reason for that is because we think that when humans first left Africa, uh, they did not have the technology for making boats, uh -huh. which means that the Aegean would have been a barrier and that people would have only been able to walk across land and so they would have gone from northwest Turkey to Thrace and Macedonia and into Europe this way. And so the Aegean and Greece were you know, an irrelevant area. But in the last 10 years, we now know that we have uh, very early activity on Crete and very early activity now here on Naxos. So maybe early humans were in this area and perhaps Greece was an important routeway. So the big question is then how did the early humans move through this area? Were they making boats? and did the Aegean look like it does today? Or was the Aegean very different and mm -hmm. perhaps they could walk across this area? Okay, so one of the big research questions we have on the project is to find out what Naxos was like and what the Cyclades were like uh, in this early prehistoric period. So today, Naxos for most people is famous for being an island, it's warm, surrounded by great swimming uh, seas, but we know that things have been very different in the past. And in fact, all of the archaeology we're talking about was during the Ice Age, when things were very different. Now, during the Ice Age, the temperature was much colder, and much of Northern Europe was covered with ice. That ice was created by taking water out of the sea, which meant that the sea, the Mediterranean, was much lower, sometimes 150 meters lower than it is today. Some Greek paleoclimate specialists have recently produced some new reconstructions of what we think the Aegean would look like during the Ice Age. So we know that throughout the Ice Age, Naxos would have been a much larger island. Naxos and Paros and uh, Keros all joined together. And at certain times, we think that actually it would have been possible to walk from Turkey to Greece through the islands. It would all have been a land. But at other times, when the sea was higher, Naxos was part of a bigger island, but it was an island surrounded by water. At Stelida, we have um, stone tools. Uh, from the site that we know were made by different kinds of human. The latest material was made by earlier versions of us, Homo sapiens. We also have very good weapons and tools that we know were made by Neanderthals, maybe 40 to 200,000 years ago. And then the earliest material we have uh, is pre-Neanderthal, probably a character called Homo heidelbergensis, uh, who is at least 250,000 years old. So the big question for us is how did all of these people get to Stelida? Did they come by boat or did they walk? So why do we care about this question? The reason we care about this really relates to almost an archaeology of ego. What makes us as Homo sapiens special? So for many archaeologists for a very long time, we have been thinking about what makes us special, what makes Homo sapiens different to all of these other characters. And one of the things that was meant to make us special was that Homo sapiens were the only people who made boats and <coughs> travelled across water. So people living today in the Cyclades, 
boats are a part of your world, your culture, but this is a very recent part of human history. So until recently, the idea was that the islands of the Mediterranean, including the Cyclades, but also all islands across the world were only ever visited quite late in history by Homo sapiens. So the idea is that it's only Homo sapiens who are intelligent enough to have the technology to make boats. So what we are finding here is changing all of this. So we have Neanderthals here in Staliva. The question is, when the Neanderthals were on Staliva, was it an island or was that when it was joined to the mainland? Now, if we can prove the Neanderthals were here when Naxos was part of an island, this will help to rewrite all human history. Our excavations are trying to get scientific dates to know exactly when the Neanderthals were here. We have the scientific techniques to get dates. That's not a problem. The problem is that at Staliva, the hill is very steep, which means that most of what we excavate uh, has eroded. So the scientific dates we get tell us the minimum age of the archaeology, but not the exact mm -hmm. age. So to answer our question, what we need is to know when the Neanderthals were there, so then we can use those dates to look at the recent sea level reconstructions. So we will continue the excavations to try and find these places where we know exactly when people were here. So we have scientific dates to, to show that people were here at least 100,000 years ago. But that is not the same as saying they were there exactly 100,000 years ago. So we still cannot make the answer as walking or boats, but we have the oldest site in the Cyclades and it still has the great potential to change the history. And this is a big question that many people in the Mediterranean have been thinking about, but this is the only excavation, or we're the first excavation, to actually try and answer these questions. Research has still a lot. Oh, okay. yes. Oh, yes. So you will continue intensely until you, Very much so. you yeah, ask all your questions. Yeah. It's a great project. We have uh, a very dynamic young team of, of Greek and Canadian and Serbian and British scholars. Um, we, we make sure while we have a, a team with senior specialists, we always make sure that there is room for us to train young students from Athens. Did you expect to find all these things at Stalina? No. Um, some of this has been a big surprise. In particular, the very, very old material. That was a that was a big surprise. So, how did you feel? It's it's very exciting. It's <laughs> it's controversial. Um, there are still some people who are uncertain about what we say, but we have important visitors coming to see us in the summer, and everybody who has visited us is convinced by what we're saying. How was the local people's reaction to the project? Or how did they receive the, the project? <coughs> We've had a fantastic reception uh, in Naxos. People have been very kind. Um, they've been very supportive. But I, I don't think that everybody knows about our work yet. And, and that sometimes has been quite deliberate. You know, we where we are working, it's, it's private land and uh, we have good relationship with the landowners, but we want to respect their privacy. That's another reason why the exhibition is very important for us, because we don't really want to bring lots of people to the site. There's not much to see unless you are a very specialist. So things like the exhibition and our website are a great way of sharing our work with people without disturbing the people at Staliva. About the exhibition, how long it will be here for, for the public? Um, and she also asked when we will be here again. So we are hoping that the exhibition will be here for at least six weeks. Uh, and our team will be back working at Staliva at the end of May for six weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and possibly we can give another public lecture then as well. 
And we also have um, a lot of information already on the web. We have um, videos about our work and our questions on uh, a YouTube channel. And uh, that all has Greek subtitles. It's very important, as I said, to give back to the, the Naxos community in general, but also um, we, we wanted to thank more specifically uh, the mayor and the municipality who have supported us, and also the, the, uh, the community at Vivlos, Tripodes, who have hosted us over the last few years. There's a lot of archaeology at Staliva, but I think after a few years, we will just be finding the same things. Also, the, the archaeology of Stalida is a bit strange. It, it's a bit like going to a factory after they have taken all their products away. And all you are left with is the rubbish from production and to try and to understand what happened with just the rubbish. So I would imagine in a few years, maybe it will be time to try and find uh, a site on Naxos where these people lived where they did their cooking, where they used their tools, where they slept. So we have a better idea of these people's lives, not just their industrial activity. I mean, with the support we've received from the community um, and, and the fact that we love working on Axos, uh, I'm certainly keen to carry on working here for the next few years, but perhaps not always to leave her, but to try and find maybe a cave site where these people lived. It's a good place. We have the archaeology, we have the beaches, we have the potatoes, the cheese and the raki. I <laughs> love Naxos, ah. what you're saying. Been here a long time and intend to keep coming back. It, at the moment, we come maybe three, four times a year. We have a, a, a small break in February and another one in October. And so we come here to do study in the Apotheki and then in the summer, the excavations. So do you believe that you will be able to answer the bigger question? For example, if this was actually an island or a part of the <coughs> mainland? To answer that question, we have the good science. At this point, it's almost now we need the luck. We need to find a part of the site where we have the activity of the Neanderthals where they left it. So when we date it, we are dating exactly when they were there, not the date when things were eroded. So we will carry on and we will cross our fingers. <laughs> so she wishes that we find it. Thank you. We are happy to talk to you again in the summer. Um, I think we usually prefer not necessarily, I mean, I'm happy to take you to the site, but again, when we do any media coverage, we sort of want the site itself to be a bit low priority. Mm -hmm. Also because the Ministry of Culture, they don't have a lot of money to protect a place like this, so it's always best for us to sort of celebrate the leader a little way away from the leader. Where are the findings? The, the finds from the excavations are in the official uh, museum Apotheki, uh, but eventually we hope with the, the new development of the museum that we will have a, a, a case mm -hmm. in Trini with material from Stalida for the public to see. So first of all, would you like to make a comment generally about your experience uh, from Naxos? The project in Naxos generally. So my first year on the project was in 2015. Um, and I loved it. It's been an amazing experience. Um, working on Naxos and working on the project is actually the reason I went into my master's in museum studies. And because of that, I've been given the opportunity to curate, co-curate on this exhibit. So how did you feel when you were a part of the team who made all these uh, important discoveries? It felt pretty amazing, pretty, pretty good. So what are your hopes, your expectations from now on about the project? Hopefully finding an actual meeting <laughs> <laughs> would be the ultimate.